Hey guys, welcome to The Quick Journey. I'm Liz and I'm really excited to talk to you guys about my Shiplap Kitchen Backsplash. In order to like fully share this entire project that we did in our kitchen, we're gonna have to go back in time because we actually started this project a year ago. I know. It's been a long time coming. I have needed to do this video and write a blog post for a very long time. But as you know, life happens and I just never got around to it. So today is as good a time as any. I am going to share with you a before and after of what our 90s kitchen looked like. We started out with a pinkish beige tile. It was set in a diamond pattern. And although the actual tile itself was a good, sturdy tile, it looked so pink in our home. And it was one of the first things I asked Mark whenever we looked at this house, can we please change the backsplash? Like the kitchen's fine, but can we please change the backsplash? Paint it, whatever we need to do. I don't like the backsplash. Um, and one thing, as you know, always leads to another. And before, we knew it, we had taken cabinets out and removed the quintessential 90s built-in desk area that like every 90s kitchen had. Um, I just, it was a catch-all and it just wasn't a very pretty space. So while we were in the middle of the project, Mark said, do you want me to take out the desk area? And I looked at him and I said, yes, yes I do. So we ended up taking that out as well. The whole plan was to just gently <laughs> and gingerly remove the backsplash, but it was like liquid nailed onto the wall and it just ended up ripping up the sheetrock and everything. So we had to do quite a bit of work to the kitchen. We had to cut down um, all the sheetrock and remove it and put up new backing to put the shiplap on. I would say the hardest part was actually getting everything off the wall. It was a lot of work to get it down. I went into this project thinking it was gonna be done in a couple weekends. And Mark had told me before we started, this is a lot more work than what you think it is. Um, and I didn't believe him, but we were about two days into the project and I said, I had no idea what I was asking when I asked you to remove the backsplash. Um, and he of course looked at me and he said, I know, I know you had no idea. But anyway, we finally got all the demo done and that was like a glorious day because then you could start really making your vision come to life. And that is just a really exciting time. So I knew um, I had looked at tons and tons of pictures online and I knew that I loved the vertical shiplap. In our old home, we had done horizontal shiplap on each side flanking our fireplace. But for this space, I wanted something a little more traditional and classic and timeless and a little bit of an English cottage flair. We were doing an open shelf and I just wanted it to be um, different than the farmhouse shiplap that I had done in our last home. So I chose a vertical shiplap and it is a specific shiplap called an eased edge shiplap. You can find it at most um, home improvement stores and it usually comes in a pine wood. So there's a little bit of prep that has to go into uh, preparing the shiplap to put on your wall. But the difference between a regular shiplap and an east edge shiplap is a historical shiplap actually laps over one another. Um, and then the modern farmhouse shiplap actually has it like separated about, they call it a nickel gap. And that shadow makes it look like there is a line there. So anyway, um, the difference between that and East Edge is the East Edge has a beveled connection. So it's more of like a tongue and groove and it has a beveled edge that creates kind of a little V like this instead of just being a gap. So it, it does come together, but it has this little V and the line, well, you'll just see in the pictures. It's just a very traditional look, something you would uh, see in like an English cottage. And I just loved it so much. So we looked high and low for enough eased edge shiplap to be able to complete our project. 
Now I will say a few key tips in doing this and making it successful is to find boards that are not super bowed, um, boards that are straight, boards that don't have a ton of knots in them, and nicks um, taken out of them because it will show on the wall you want them to be as perfect as possible, which is, I know it's hard, but there are places where you will be able to um, conceal or camouflage those things, but you wanna make sure you have enough boards for the open spaces, especially if you're doing open shelving, that the little nicks or dings in all of the boards and things like that won't show. So just be aware of that. Now we did do a few things to prep our boards that I think made it very successful and I'm just gonna be honest, I didn't really want to do all the things, but Mark said, if we're gonna do it, we're gonna do it right and so we're gonna do all the things and so I said, okay, I'll do all the things. So the first thing I did was I sanded each of the uh, tops of the boards down with an orbital, orbital sander, made the work so much easier. Then I primed it and then we went and I sanded it down again after the primer dried with um, a fine grit sandpaper just to help smooth it down even more and then I primed it again. So I sanded with a heavy grit, I primed it, I sanded with a fine grit and then I primed it again. So it was sanded twice and primed twice and then I put three coats of color on. A few reasons why I did this is because we wanted as smooth a finish as we could get. We wanted to cover up and fill in as many of the imperfections as we could. And I wanted it to be sealed really, really well since it was going on as a kitchen backsplash. We ended up going with Snowbound um, by Sherwin-Williams and I love it. It's a beautiful white color. I'm just obsessed with it. It's in many of our home uh, rooms in our home and I went with eggshell finish. That way it wasn't super like lustery, but it also um, wasn't super matte and it's easy to wipe down. So it works really, really well. A question I get asked a lot is since it's in our kitchen, what about the water? And if you wipe it down right after it gets splashed with water, it's just not a problem. It just, it's not. Just don't let the water sit on it. And then our shiplap is lifted up just a tiny bit off of the counter where, and there's, a, well, we haven't caulked yet. You know how whenever you have a project and you get 90 to 95% of the way through and the last like 5% takes you like three years to complete? That's where we're at. We still need to caulk along the bottom of the shiplap, that gap that's between the counter and the bottom of the shiplap but we left it lifted up so that water wouldn't be sitting on the bottom side of the shiplap and like sucked in and absorbed through the bottom of the shiplap. So that's another tip. Um, and just keep it dry. That's all I can say. I don't have any problems with it um, behind the, the stove. I just wipe it down if there's been steam and I use my uh, vent on our microwave and I just don't really have any trouble with it. So anyway, I love the vertical shiplap. It made such a difference in our room. I feel like it's so charming and it's different than the other farmhouse shiplap that I see in so many places. I feel like it has more of a European flair and I really, really love that. So I'm happy that I went with the vertical shiplap. It draws your eye up and it makes the room feel bigger and it's just a very clean way to bring in a, a simple design element, which is a stripe. I mean, a stripe just never goes out of style, and that's essentially what you're creating with shiplap, is a simple stripe, and it's very versatile. I feel like I'm gonna be able to take this through different um, design seasons, and I feel like it's gonna be able to stay with us for a really long time, and not be something that I'm gonna wanna change in a couple years. So. Um, we do still have one area in our kitchen. We were supposed to um, fill where the desk was with an antique pie safe or of some sort and the space is just too narrow. And when I say too narrow, I mean like a quarter of an inch too narrow. It's painful how many pie safes I found that are just a quarter of an inch too wide and we just can't shave off a quarter of an inch of the cabinetry and countertop or a quarter of an inch of the side of a solid wood pie safe. So um, I have been looking for over a year for a pie safe for that space and have yet to find it. 
So we will keep looking or at some point we will do built-ins there and have someone custom build a cabinet to go in there. But with the price of lumber, that probably won't be anytime soon. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this simple little kitchen update. Um, I hope you enjoy seeing the before and the after and I would love it if you would leave a comment and let me know if you have done anything like this um, and let me know what you think of the finished product. Hey guys, happy Friday. Okay, this is the weekend that we are going to start tackling our one room challenge project. Um, so it's Friday and I am going to clean out the cabinets that need to get cleaned out. And I am taking everything off the counters like our coffee and then all my baking and cooking stuff. And I'm gonna be moving them because we're gonna be taking down the backsplash and the cabinet that is coming down for you guys to kind of come along. I moved this little cart over there under the clock to put coffee, um, like a little coffee station, and the kids' vitamins are over there. So that's the start. out coffee stuff's gone cooking stuff is gone stuff by the sink is gone everything in these cabinets are out Thought I would share with you kind of where I put things where they will be hanging out um, until the kitchen is done so let me show you okay I did put the cooking stuff here on the island because I use that every single day and so that will be easy to move off um, if we need to. And then I also put the diffuser over here because we have to have one in our kitchen. So anyway, um, our treat dish is there. Here's the little coffee slash vitamin station with some stuff underneath. And then all of our dishes that we use on a daily basis are over here on this dresser. So that is where they will stay um, being used and also collecting dust until we get this little project um, finished. So anyway, I'm excited to share the process of demo, which is happening this weekend.
Thanks guys, if you haven't already, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe and just let me know what you think in the comments. It helps my little channel grow and it helps YouTube know that they should show it to other people who might be interested in vertical kitchen shiplap backsplash. So anyway, thank you guys and we'll see you next week.